Okay, so in this video, we're gonna demonstrate hip extension, goniometry, and manual muscle testing. Hip extension occurs in the sagittal plane. It has a firm end feel, and the normal value is zero to 20 degrees. All right, so with, with this um, measurement, we're gonna have the patient prone, and we wanna make sure that her ASISs are on the table and not the pillow, because the pillow is gonna be under her abdomen, um, but not under her hip bone. So I'm gonna have you line your stomach, and I want those two hip bones in the front to be on the table and not on this pillow. Okay, that looks good. Let me go grab my goni. Okay, so goniometer alignment for hip extension is the same as it is for hip flexion. So gonia, the fulcrum is gonna be over greater trochanter of the femur. The stationary arm is gonna be lined up with the lateral midline of the pelvis and the moving arm is gonna to go to the lateral midline of the femur using lateral epicondyle as my bony landmark. Okay, so first let's find this greater trochanter. So I'm gonna put my hand here. If I give tactile cueing, it's gonna be proximal to the knee. So I'm gonna have you roll this, this hip in and out. Good, take a little break. And then what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna keep those hip bones on the bone, hip bones on the bed, don't let them come up. You're gonna keep this knee straight and you're gonna to try to lift this entire leg up off the table as far as it'll go. So if you come around here, I want you to see that her lateral midline of her pelvis is like this. It's not parallel to the bed. It kind of moved like this. Come on back down. Let's do that again so that the videographer can see. So here it looks parallel. Go ahead and come on back up. This whole thing came up. I don't know if you can see that. And then we've got lateral midline. Good. Come on back down. So we've got about five degrees of extension. And then we're going to do our MMT in the same exact position. So stabilization hand is on the ipsilateral PSIS. I'm going to have you do that same exact motion where you keep your hip on the table, bring the whole leg up off the table, and then I'm going to try to push you back down. We make sure that your stable, that your resistance hand is proximal to the knee because if you push down here, you're crossing a joint and that um, breaks like the cardinal rule of MMT and keeping joints safe. All right, whenever you're ready, I'm gonna have you bring it up. Stay strong, don't let me push you down. Stay strong, stay strong. Good, there's the four and the five. It would probably be better for me to either lower this table because I am on a high-low or to stand up so that when I give my resistance, I'm at 90 degrees to the line of pull. So let's try that again. Don't let me push you down. You can see how my arm is in a better position. Good, take a little break. So that was your three, four, and five. Um, we've talked about how, because we're measuring it against gravity, getting below a three is virtually impossible. However, um, let's have you roll over onto your right side. And I should clarify, I'll clarify this in class. When I say virtually impossible, I mean by virtue of the um, process, not that that muscle can never be weaker than a three. Like obviously any muscle in the body can be weaker than a three. But the fact that we measured it against gravity doesn't bode well for our MMT system to work well. So I'm stabilizing the leg. Um, I've got stabilization proximal to the knee, proximal to the ankle. And I would say, I just want you fully on your side, good. I would say, try to kick this whole leg back toward me. So if she could do it, just make sure that you are not helping. All I'm doing is supporting her up. She did the actual hip extension. So that would be gravity eliminated. That would be her two. And then if we had to differentiate between a one and a zero, I'd have her roll over into prone, into on your, on your belly. I'm gonna get rid of this pillow. And we would have her do a glute set. So those muscles in your backside, I'm gonna have you tighten those up. And if we can see contraction, we, we call it a one. If we can't see contraction, then we're gonna palpate. So, all right, those buttock muscles, I'm gonna place a finger right in the center like this. Is that okay? So I would just place one finger right in the center, and I would say, can you squeeze those muscles again? I wanna see if I can feel it. And then if I could feel it, I would give her a one. And if I couldn't see it, I couldn't feel it, she would earn a zero. Thank you.